almost 2 million euros is the supposed sum misused by the Catalan government when organizing the independence referendum last year, according to the Spanish judiciary. But this still needs to be proven. Hello and welcome to Catalan News. The Spanish judge in charge of the independence case raised the accusations of misuse of public funds against Catalan leaders to up to 1.9 million euros. For many, including the magistrate himself, this has prompted the question, how can this hypothetical misuse of funds be explained if Catalan finances have been under the scrutiny of Spain for months before the referendum? All eyes are now on the Spanish finance minister, who has been told to prove that a crime did not take place, to some commentators' surprise. In our show today, we'll look into this controversy in more depth, and we'll also find out about an expansion of the Barcelona port. At the moment, the German court of Schleswig-Holstein is considering Carlos Puigdemont's extradition for misuse of funds only. The deposed Catalan president and all his 13 ministers are accused of this, and now the Supreme Court judge is sparing no efforts to prove it true. The Spanish finance ministry officials claim that no public money has been spent on the referendum, but also say that even consuming light could be a crime. Yet Rajoy's executive is in the spotlight because it had the Catalan finances under control when this supposed misuse of funds took place. The versions of the Spanish government and the judge do not seem to match up. Almost 2 million euros. That is the estimated cost of last October's referendum on independence, according to the Spanish court prosecuting Catalan leaders for misuse of public funds. New police reports were disclosed today, adding 300,000 euros to previous estimates. This figure includes the alleged cost of international observers, printing posters and renting the Catalan National Theatre for a partisan event. The new figure comes amid frictions between the Spanish government and the judiciary. The Treasury Minister recently contradicted the Supreme Court in saying that no public funds were used for the referendum, at least not since last September when the ministry took over Catalonia's public finances. In response, the judge in charge of the case has asked the minister for proof. The main unionist party in Catalonia, Ciutadans, criticizes the minister for calling the investigation into question. Demanem explicacions al senyor Montoro i al govern d'Espanya perquè molts no entenem com ha sortit tan ràpid a negar que hi ha hagut malversació, no sé si per tapar la seva gestió potser. Pro independence parties insist that no public funds were used for the vote. The clash between the Spanish government and the court, as they see it, reflects the absurdity of the case against the referendum. Estamos frente a un estado escorpión que se que se acaba matando a sí mismo cuando ve que no puede con uh, con las circunstancias que a las que se enfrenta. Today, a Spanish official in charge of the Catalan administration defended the Treasury Minister, yet he said that allowing public buildings to be used as polling stations, including the electricity used, could still justify the misuse of public funds charge. The Catalan Parliament Speaker, also member of Esqueda Party, spent his second and final day in Geneva, Switzerland, where he held several meetings. Roger Torrent discreetly met some UN rapporteurs, a senior official of La Francophonie, an organization of French-speaking countries worldwide, and also the mayor of Geneva, Rémy Pagani. The Spanish obstruction of swearing in an MP as Catalan president was tackled, which he described as a violation of fundamental rights. Also in the meetings, Torrent emphasized the need to politically solve political conflicts. Pagani responded by showing interest in mediating in the Catalan issue. La Suisse reste, et Genève en particulier, reste à disposition des deux parties pour trouver un accord. Parce que de toute façon, quoi qu'il arrive, un jour il faudra que les gens se mettent à table, les plus intelligents, pour trouver une solution. We move to Brussels now, as what seemed a pretty low-profile event held yesterday has turned into yet another clash between the Catalan and Spanish administrations. The Catalan deposed culture minister, Luis Puig, who is taking refuge from the Spanish justice in the Belgian capital, attended an event to pay tribute to a famous writer at the Catalan government delegation in Brussels. It was the first time that a dismissed Catalan official set foot in the delegation, now under direct control of Spain. This visit sparked outrage in the Spanish Foreign Affairs Ministry, which announced a prompt retaliation. Rajoy's government could take action against the delegation employees tomorrow after its weekly cabinet meeting. In business news, the passengers and cargo going through the port of Barcelona have been constantly growing for a long time now, as we've reported in this show several times. To make sure it handles the increasing amount of users, the infrastructure is expanding to meet its new needs. The port of Barcelona is a hub of commercial and passenger activity. 
And today marked yet another special occasion in the maritime facility's ongoing evolution with the inauguration of a new terminal for the Carnival Cruise Line. Part of the biggest cruise line operator in the world, the company has invested 30 million euros in the construction of the terminal. Already it is expected that 38 Carnival ships will come to Barcelona this year, with nearly 300 transfers. This makes up 34% of the overall cruise ship market share at the Catalan capital's port. Both the port and the company want to de-seasonalize the port's activity, keeping it sustained throughout the year. Partint d'una situació molt important, que és la situació de privilegi que té Barcelona i el port de Barcelona dintre d'aquest sector. Som el primer port d'Europeu, el primer port de la Mediterrània amb activitat de creuers. Per tant, vull destacar que el grup Carnival i el port de Barcelona estem molt alineats amb aquesta situació. 75% of Carnival Cruise Line's activity in Barcelona takes place outside the summer period. In fact, during the low season, the company's activity increased by 13% in 2017. The company has a concession of 25 years and will give work to 250 people. Already this year, traffic at the port increased by nearly 20% compared to the first quarter of 2017. There was also a large increase in the number of passengers passing through the facility of 26.5%. Throughout the previous year, container traffic also increased by 26%, with the port handling more than 61 million tons of goods for the first time, making it the fastest growing port in Europe. Still talking about the economy, Caixa Bank, one of the top banks in Catalonia, is being investigated by the Spanish National Court for allegedly helping the Chinese Mafia launder money. The judge is accusing some of its branch's managers and workers of helping investigated Chinese Mafia members to hide irregular funds. According to the court, the bank workers deliberately helped them launder more than 30 million euros, despite suspecting their client's intentions. The allegations have already been denied by the bank, which moved its headquarters to Valencia, south of Catalonia, when the Catalonian crisis peaked last autumn. The work of famed Catalan artist Joan Miró can be found just about everywhere in Barcelona. It's less well known, though, that the world-class surrealist had a strong bond with nature. In fact, he credits most of his work to time spent on a family farm 100 kilometers south of the Catalan capital. And this beautiful property opens to the public in less than a month. Learning about great art right at the source is a privilege few are able to enjoy. But if you are in Catalonia and are a fan of Joan Miró, in under a month you'll be able to do just that. Montroig del Camp, a southern town near Tarragona, is where one can find Mas Miró, the artist's family farmhouse. Frequently hosting names like Hemingway, for Miró this place was a source of inspiration and much, much more. Això per Miró era la catedral, era un exercici espiritual d'introspecció, de contacte amb la terra. I tota la seva obra ve de la Fundació Mas Miró de Montroig. The inauguration is set for tomorrow to celebrate the 125th birthday of the artist. It will be open to the public for 8 euros at the beginning of May until November. Then more renovations will start, adding to the current living spaces and ecological crops. There's also a route through the town which will show where the painter drew inspiration. The most impressive element, perhaps, is Miro's studio. It's remained virtually untouched since 1976. This would be the last time he visited the house, only a few years before his death. Miro was a Barcelona-born sculptor, painter, ceramist, and much more. His work is celebrated as some of the most significant in the 20th century. He continued visiting Mas Miro up until a few years before his death in Mallorca, because, as he said himself, Mallorca, Barcelona and Munroig configured my personality. From this triangle, my art was born. Munroig del Camp is just a few kilometers away from the birthplace of another universal Catalan figure, Anthony Gaudí. In fact, one of the architect's most important works is the Palau Güell, which can now be visited at night. If you've never been to this modernist masterpiece, have a look at these images to know what to expect. And that's it for us today. Thanks for following and see you tomorrow.